spiral dive. However, it's not really an acro trick, but one of the most essential maneuvers to learn since it's the best height losing maneuver. Together with the full stall, these are the two most important maneuvering skills for general safety in paragliding. During a fast spiral dive, the pilot is at the same level with the glider while the leading edge is facing the ground and is about parallel with the horizon. The pilot turns very fast around the center of the rotation and the sink rate can reach over 20 meters per second. Because the movement is continuous and the speed of rotation is high, the centrifugal forces on the pilot are the most inconvenient of all maneuvers in paragliding. Even though the g-forces can peak much higher in an asymmetric sat or a tumbling, but only for short moments and therefore it's a lot easier to handle. To be able to keep deep spiral going for a longer period of time, it is necessary to breathe and tension the muscles in the correct way that prevents the blood from leaving the head, which could ultimately lead to loss of sight or blackout. I will tell you more about this later. It is extremely important to learn this maneuver progressively. This will be our first experience with higher g-forces and the body needs to get used to it. In the beginning, even a steep turn might become pretty uncomfortable. But we just have to keep practicing and our feeling will quickly improve. The other reason why we need to progress step by step is the exit, the most technical part of the maneuver. The more speed there is in the spiral, the higher the amount of energy that we have to deal with when exiting. Coming out from the rotation with too much energy can cause troubles. Preparation Set the harness to a highly upright position. This is important so that the g-forces run more parallel with the spine. Otherwise it will be really hard to keep our head up and this could even lead to a neck injury. Open the chest strap as wide as possible to make the harness more sensitive for weight shifting and to reduce the risk of riser twist. Always use a regular sitting harness to learn all maneuvers and never a pot harness. Entry Entering a spiral dive is fairly simple. Shift your weight to one side and carefully start to apply brake on that side. The glider starts to turn and accelerate. First, we will see the wingtip approaching to the horizon. Picking up more and more speed, the angle between the horizon and the leading edge will decrease and ultimately the wing will face the ground completely. This is called a nose down spiral and it is the position of maximum sink rate. The faster the turn, the higher the brake pressure will be. Entering the spiral needs gentle and progressive braking, but to maintain a certain speed and sink rate, we will not have to hold down the brake that deep anymore. Once reaching the desired speed, we have to release some brake to maintain the same rotation. How much exactly? That depends. If it's only a steep turn, which is not so fast, then we have to keep braking actively. But if the angle drops down more, we need to come back higher up with the inside brake. In a nose down spiral, just a little touch or even no brake at all will be enough to keep going. In this case, your body will feel very heavy. You can now center yourself in the harness to be in a neutral position. If we are nose down and the outside wingtip closes or flatters, it means that we are definitely breaking too much on the inside. Breaking a lot in this position will not increase the sink rate. In fact, not having the wing all the way open will even slow down the rotation. For maximum sink rate, we have to let the wing fly as fast as possible with as little input as possible. On the other hand, if we notice that the spiral starts to slow down, but we want to keep going, a steering input on the inside will be necessary. When turning at higher speeds, short kicks on the brake are a great way to adjust the speed or to initiate the exit. It is actually the exit that needs the most practice to master this maneuver. When descending at high speeds, there is an incredible amount of energy in the movement. We have to learn how to control this and bleed out the energy in a gradual and safe way. Thanks to the high cross stability of the paraglider designs, theoretically, by centering yourself and releasing the brake, 
the glider should automatically slow down and exit from the spiral by itself within a couple of turns. However, the theory does not always apply to practice, and anyways, this process may take way too long while the ground is coming really fast at you. Learning how to exit actively in a controlled way will not only make the spiral safer, but will also allow us to exit at much lower heights that can win precious moments when reaching the ground is urgent. I split up the exit process into two stages. First, slowing down, and second, killing the remaining energy. In this first stage of the exit, we start slowing the rotation down. We achieve this through counter steering with the brake and weight shifting. The more energy there is in the turn, the harder the counter impulse needs to be to initiate a fast enough exit. Let's take a look at different scenarios depending on the speed of the turn. As long as the angle between the leading edge of the horizon is still wide open, let's say up to 45 degrees, I call this a steep turn or moderate spiral. The sink rate here is around 5 to 10 meters per second. It is usually enough to simply release the inside brake completely, center your body in the harness, and the rotation will start to slow down automatically. May this, however, happen too slow, we can help it by some counter steering until we start to feel the speed decreasing. We don't necessarily have to release the inside brake all the way up, but work with both brakes at the same time. Nose down spiral. As the angle between the leading gauge at the horizon is closing in, the sink rate can reach up to 20 meters per second or more. Being in such a full power descent, we need a short but strong counter steering input to initiate the exit rapidly enough. This means releasing the inside brake, weight shifting and braking to the outside of the turns until we feel that the speed of rotation and the g-forces start to drop. But as soon as you feel that the rotation is slowing down, don't keep on counter steering for too long, otherwise you might initiate a dangerous counter turn. Once the speed of rotation starts to drop, it means that you manage to start the exit process. Now we have to focus on killing the remaining energy in a controlled way. Exiting too quickly with too much energy can cause a violent climb followed by a powerful surge. A bad reaction here can end up in a stall or a big collapse. Exiting too slow is of course safer, but this can burn too much altitude that we often cannot afford to lose when already closer to the ground. This is why it's so important to learn how to deal with the remaining energy safely. We have to slow down the rotation gradually so that the angle between the leading edge and the horizon starts to increase again, coming back to a 45 degree angle step by step. When this starts to happen, we usually don't need more counter steering inputs. Center your body and touch both brakes gently to feel and control the glider better. Looking at the inside wing tip, our goal is to arrive to an angle where the tip is still touching the horizon and the wing is at a 45 degree angle. Keep the wing in this position for a few turns. You may need to apply a combination of gentle inside brake and weight shifting to keep the wing there. Once you can feel that the extra speed and energy of the spiral is gone, return to straight flight just like from a regular tight turn. Quick spiral exit. In a real situation, when we have to go down fast, there is no time to waste. Being able to safely spiral to low altitudes and then exit rapidly in a controlled way is a must-have skill for all paraglider pilots. Most of you surely already experienced the big climb and surge when exiting a spiral unclean. This can become very dangerous. We need to transform the remaining energy into a climbing turn instead of a violent straight up climb. Initiate the exit by counter steering the same way as described earlier. Just before swinging back underneath the wing, we need to move back to the inside with our weight and pull the inside brake to keep the wing in the turn until the energy is gone. Okay, you can start hands up, leading it out with weight shift, maybe a little bit of outside brake, and now come back to the right, pull some right, oh nice, that's the way you kill the energy, sideways. 
It needs a bit of practice to catch the right moment and pull the right amount, but you will be surprised how smooth and gentle the exits will become. Dangers Be careful not to be too aggressive on the brake when accelerating into the turn because it's possible to spin the glider. Use weight shifting actively to support the brake inputs. This way it won't be necessary to force the wing too much by braking. Be aware that being light on a wing we lose speed and handling, so being on the lower end of the weight range we need to be even more careful while entering. Never force the glider too much into the turn. Exit Coming out of the turn with too much speed without bleeding the energy out sideways will lead to a violent climb. We should not brake at all in this moment while the glider is behind as this will make the situation even worse and we might even stall the glider. This moment may feel pretty scary as well because we will not have airspeed at all. After this the wing starts to shoot forward and we need to stop it in front by braking. Watch which side of the wing will surge forward first as this will rarely happen in a symmetrical way coming out from the turn. If one half of the wing is diving out first you need to brake this side more otherwise it will collapse and could cravat. But remember that a moment ago we were really close to the stall point and the wing needs to recover from that by picking up some speed first. If we start to brake too hard too early there is a high risk of stalling the glider. Anti-G straining maneuver. When attempting to spiral for a longer period of time it's important to prevent the blood from flowing down the body. From the very beginning on we need to strengthen the lower body muscles like the legs, the belly and bottom. This creates a natural gait and prevents the blood from flowing down to the tip of the feet which will be very painful. The correct breathing is just as important. The simple way is to quickly breathe in one rhythm and breathe out three rhythms with pressure. Something like this. These two things will help you to stay in focus and handle the force as well. Differences on acro gliders. Due to the much higher wing loading of the acro wings, it needs a lot less effort and inputs to enter and control the spiral. With some it is even possible by weight shifting only. The spiral will be a great speed taking maneuver to enter some of the most radical tricks such as the tumbling. To do so, we don't actually accelerate into a stable deep spiral, but just enter it quickly and progressively and then instantly begin with the exit process when the leading edge closes down to the horizon. This is the quickest way to gain maximum power with as little height loss as possible. Key points Enter progressively with weight shift and break. Progress step by step into faster rotations. No big climbs on exit. Learn to kill the energy in a flat turn. Focus on fast but clean exits. Happy practice and soft landings.